So I really wanna try and feed my family a fine dining style meal for under 25 bucks. But every time I'm at the store, I just can't believe how expensive everything is. And I honestly have no clue what I'm going to make. So I just really need to browse the grocery store aisles and see what's out there. So let's get going. Sound good? Let's shop. Okay, in the grocery store, and you know my routine, I usually like to head over to the protein counter, and really, that's because that's always the most expensive thing. And honestly, I have no clue what I'm gonna get yet. I really just have to check prices and see what we can do. It's time to get creative. All right, I've inspected everything. I've got a great find here. Honestly, a two pack of pork tenderloin here, 1186 is two pounds. That is eight ounces of protein per person for Family Four. Huge win, only 1186. Definitely getting this. Got the protein, such a huge win there. We're heading over to produce, check out starch and veg. I'm thinking like a scallop potato, maybe a green beans, almondine. Let's see what's on sale. Hopefully we can get a huge victory again. Let's for sure do scallop potatoes. It's very easy to make. I know I've got some milk and onions at home. You know, those normal cupboard staples that just about everyone has in their own kitchen. All right, I have two and a quarter pounds of potatoes, just four russets. Should put me about 330 with the pork. We're probably at 15 bucks. We still have about $10 to go. Plenty of money, hopefully, to get everything else we need. Green beans are about 250 a pound. One pound of green beans is definitely going to feed four. So let's get this weighed up and into the basket. Now for a really important part to the dish. Now I do have some spices at home, just like a lot of folks have dry spices. I'm probably gonna do something with the pork there, but what about a little, just a little bit of extra something on top? Maybe like a, like a gremolata, which is really Italian chopped parsley and a little bit of lemon zest, a little bit of lemon juice possibly a hair of olive oil maybe have some honey at home too to even just take it to the next level but let's pick that up should be cheap and we still should have just a little bit more to go and i think we're gonna be all right i'm going to snag one bunch of italian flat leaf parsley this is coming in at only a buck 29 per bunch I'm gonna bag it up and throw it in the cart all right let's do a little price check here because you know my math skills leave a lot to be desired so we are around 11.86 for the pork, a little over three for the potatoes, 2.50 for the green beans, 89 cents for the lemon, $1.29 for the parsley. So we're right around 20 bucks. We're, we're creeping up on it. So what I really need to do is see, oh my, oh sh We need Parmesan cheese for the potatoes, the scallop. I totally forgot about that. Gosh, darn it. I totally miscalculated this. I scalloped potatoes have to have cheese in it. So um, all the Parmesan's are around four bucks and I'm already at 20, so that would get me to 24. And I know there are still several states in the US that have tax on food, so I'm trying to be mindful there. <sighs> Hopefully we can find something. Huge save there. They had a nice little cheese blend of Parmesan and Asiago, which is gonna be really good in my scalloped potatoes, but um, I, the moment of truth is here. We need to be under that $25 mark. And I honestly think for the green beans, maybe just a little lemon juice, since I'm using most of the lemon zest for the gremolata, it'd be tasty. This is always the part that makes me nervous when I start unloading onto the belt because I just don't know what the final cost is gonna be. So let's have a look. And 2262, I'm getting real good at this. Maybe we should change this from feeding a family for 25 for feeding a family of 23, because that's the number I keep hitting in these recipe videos so far. But I know that there's going to be some point where I'm going to need that extra two bucks. I'm always trying to be so mindful of those states that still do pay tax on food. And I'm also going to dig into my cupboard to see what else I can find to take this to the next level. I think I've got a couple easy things that most folks will have in house. Let's go. Hands down, the hardest part of this recipe is going to be pulling as much flavor out as possible. So we're really going to lean into these cooking techniques to do that. And of course, like I said, dig in the cabinet and see what's in there if we can pull out anything that's a staple ingredient. What we're gonna do now is start by trussing up our pork tenderloin and getting it marinated. Trussing it is going to help seal in those juices, help it keep shape so that when we slice it, it's juicy, it's tender, it's absolutely flavorful and delicious. You have to do this. It's very, very easy. You're just gonna need some butcher's twine and of course, these two pork tenderloins. So at the bottom end of that pork tenderloin, I'm gonna tie a quick little double knot, give it a quick little firm tug, then go up about an inch and a half, wrap the long part of the butcher's twine around, then loop it under that piece that was still there where I put my finger, pull it tight. Here's another look at it, same sort of deal. Okay, go all the way down about an inch and a half to two inches. Once you get to the end, flip it over. Then what I come back and do is I tuck it under every other loop just like this. And then at the very end, very simply, okay, 
I'm just going to give it a quick little double knot again, secure it tightly and cut off any excess butcher's twine. And trussing just takes a little bit of practice. I promise once you do it a few times, you've got it. You will never go back after you taste it. Now for this marinade, I know for sure I'm gonna do some garlic cloves. So I have three of them here, and then we're gonna have to see what else we need to get. So just give it a quick pop on each of these, and then we're just gonna start finally chopping. And just as soon as I'm done doing this, notice I'm not using the garlic press anymore. I don't know what's gotten into me. I'm going over to my cupboard. Let's see what I have in here. Any classic staple that everyone else would have. Looks like rosemary and thyme should do. All right, I think I have everything I need. Now for marinating, you know me if you've been following me, I love to marinate in these little plastic zip bags. If you've got a Pyrex dish, totally fine. No big deal. So we're gonna add the pork tenderloin in there. Next, I've got about a quarter cup of olive oil we're gonna put just put in there. Then the finely minced garlic clove. Now I was able to pull out obviously some rosemary and some thyme. Another good combination would be oregano and basil. Or if you just have one of these, fantastic. It's going to help. So we're just gonna sprinkle these in there. All right, we also wanna season it very, very well with salt and pepper. It's gonna be about a teaspoon and a half of salt. I know that seems like a lot, but here is the deal. I don't have all night to marinate this. If you do amen, do it. The flavor will be much more intense. I have to get food on the table and I'm maybe gonna be able to marinate for 30 to 45 minutes. So I need to pull out as much flavor as possible. Again, next we're just gonna season up with pepper and get these ingredients moving around. Now that everything's in there, I'm just gonna quickly seal the bag up, get any excess air out of there. And then I'm gonna take the time, maybe just two minutes or so and really massage the ingredients into the pork tenderloin. Again, I don't have a lot of time to marinate this and I want to infuse as much flavor as possible. So in the meantime, I'm just going to go ahead and pop it in the refrigerator. And again, I'm going to try to give that pork as much marinade time as possible. So I'm going to get started on my potatoes and again, pulling as much flavor as possible. What we want to do is just slice off the ends of one yellow onion. You could use a red, a sweet or a white, and then we're just going to slice it in half, remove that outer peel, give it a quick small dice. Now, go back to the cooktop. I've got a small sauce pot. I'm gonna turn it on low heat, add in some butter, and then once it's melted, I'm gonna add in the onions. I want to caramelize these. Just give them a stir as soon as you put it in there. You know what, I'm gonna crank the heat on to medium. We need to get this going just a little bit quicker here. Now, Comey's, I can't get a full caramelization on these. I don't have that kind of time. That's why I crank the heat up, and I only have about four or five minutes, but that's all the time it should take to prep up our potatoes. Quickly peel up our four russet potatoes, and every minute or so, let's go back over to the onions, make sure they're not burning. Okay, great. Back to the potatoes. If you've got great knife cuts, I want you to practice. Slice these nice and thin. If not, use a mandolin, and you know my rule. Once you start getting nervous, stop using it and then just add them to a nice container of water so they don't turn brown. With that short amount of time, the onions look great. What if maybe just one finely minced garlic clove, add that in there? I think it's just gonna make it that much better. And I've said it a million times, once you smell garlic while cooking it, it's probably done, 20 to 30 seconds. At this point, I wanna make a roux. So I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, mix it in until completely combined, and then I have two cups of whole milk. You could use half and half and cream if you want a ton of extra fat, but me, all I had was milk as that solid staple. Crank the heat on to high. This will activate our roux, make it nice and creamy and thick, just like this. This is perfect consistency, also called nappe. Now, to know how to do this, coat the back of the spoon, run your finger in there, see how it barely creeps in there, it doesn't at all. This is perfect. Let's add a couple more goodies to this. Now to finish off this sauce, remember I have that little Asiago Parm blend. Now, if you were able to find Parmesan cheese or Asiago cheese or even another cheese that you love for nice and cheap, grab it. So I'm gonna put in like a half cup of this. I want this cheese sauce to be really, really cheesy. Also, very important, season this sauce up very well with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. You're gonna need to season once, taste twice. Taste it, season it, taste it again, see if it needs anything else. Now, the reason being, this sauce is what's going to season up our potatoes. There's not going to be anything else. So make sure all of this is completely mixed in before we start assembling. Should be really creamy, super cheesy. I'm just gonna put a spoon in here, give it a quick little taste, see what it needs. Mine definitely needs a little bit more black pepper. Maybe yours needs salt. Again, season once, taste twice, mix everything together. Let's go back over to our sink. I'm gonna drain our potatoes, give them a quick little shake. 
Then I have a seven by 11 casserole dish. I'm just gonna spray with some nonstick spray. Now to assemble this, we're just gonna start off on the bottom with just a little bit of the sauce, mix it around a little bit on the bottom. It's just gonna be that bottom barrier, a little creamier, a little bit more delicious. And then we start layering on our potatoes. And I'm thinking, I still have some cheese left over, so I'm gonna make these extra cheesy. Again, more flavor, the better. In between these layers, let's just add on a little bit more cheese. Once that's on there, I'm going to add about another third of our delicious sauce. Spread it on there. It does not have to be perfect at all. Just try to coat as best you can. Add the remaining potatoes on top of that. And then I'm going to swap out that wooden spoon for a rubber spatula. I want to get every little drop out of here. This is gold and so tasty. Scoop it all on there. Spread it out nice all over the top. Finish it up with the remaining cheese. We are going in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. It should take right at one hour to finish cooking. And honestly, an hour is a great amount of time to get everything finished up, but that's not what concerns me. The biggest issue is, and it always is, is timing and making sure the pork is done, the potatoes are done, the beans are done, the gremolata is done, and nothing is cold. Everything is ready to serve up, nothing is sitting. That's always the challenge. So let's get started right away. Now for the gremolata, this is a classic Italian topping that actually goes on Oso Buco, and it's simply parsley, garlic, and lemon zest. I've got one bunch, I've rinsed and dried it, one garlic clove, one zest of one lemon. And again, when it comes to chopping parsley, go down a little bit through those stems. There's just so much flavor in there. And we're gonna finely mince it up, and I'm just gonna add it to a bowl, zest up one lemon, finely mince up some garlic, put everything together. Once it's all in the bowl, just use a spoon and give it a quick mix until it is combined. I want it to be maybe a little saucier, all right? Not necessarily a chimichurri, but a little saucier. So I'm thinking, I think I'm gonna add in just a little bit of olive oil and maybe a touch of honey for sweetness. And then I, I wanna season it with salt and pepper. Three tablespoons of olive oil, one tablespoon of honey should be good enough. And I'm gonna season it, of course, with salt and pepper, and then just mix it to combine. Definitely going to be easier to spread this all over the pork. Let's give it a quick taste. Oh yeah. A little bit of sweetness from the honey, a little bright notes from the lemon. I think it's gonna go really, really well with the pork. I'm gonna set this to the side. Got some parsley on my face. Let's get going on the green beans. And remember, we've got one pound of green beans, so this should be plenty. There are two ways to prep them up. You can literally just snip off the root stem end with your fingers, or you can cut it. Now, one of the questions that I always get is, why don't you ever cut off the other end? Well, it's just kind of open-ended and, and sometimes really pretty with a little point on there. I don't think there's any reason to do it unless you want to. And then again, the other way is just to line them up and then trim them. What I usually do is line up like five, six, or seven green beans in a row on that stem end and just slice it. And obviously super easy prep with the green beans. Let's see how much time we have left on the potatoes. Alexa, how much time on my timer? You have 23 minutes left on your one hour timer. Okay, so I've got to get going because I think it's going to take about 15 to 18 minutes for my pork tenderloin. We got to get water boiling for the green beans. Let's roll. Large pot of water right on the cooktop. Crank the heat up onto high on another burner. My large rondo or frying pan. Crank the heat onto high. Two tablespoons of olive oil. Wait till it starts to smoke. And of course, right in the middle of my pan smoking and ready to roll, my glasses break. The screw came out. I found it. Uh, I'm going to try to put these back together real quick and get back to the cooktop. And I may be the clumsiest man of all time. I dropped that tiny little screw on the floor. My floor is gray. There's salt and pepper all over it. Oh my God. There's only one more thing that could possibly work. I, I just don't even know what to say. I, just my clumsiness is wild. I don't know how I'm going to find that screw, but moment of truth. I found this in the center council of my car. I don't know what's in them. Oh yeah. Yes. Ba I mean, these are old, but backups, they work. I can see. Let's cook. Got my oil back to smoking. Going to add my pork tenderloins right in there. Immediately going to turn the heat down to medium high. I'm going to add in two tablespoons of butter. Definitely one of those household staples. And then if you've ever seen my steak au pois video, I move the protein around in the oil to make sure every little square centimeter is completely golden brown, just like this. And I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit more. Uh, give it a quick flip, and we want to cook this on all sides, and I mean all sides, roughly two to three minutes 
on all four sides, my friends. So a couple of quick things while the pork is searing. If you start to notice that the garlic and herbs are burning, turn the heat down. It's okay if it takes a couple extra minutes. We want it to be perfectly golden brown on all sides and not burnt. But also to help with that, I think I'm gonna add the pan in the oven once it's brown on all sides and get it till it's 140 degrees Fahrenheit internally, which should take in between eight and 10 minutes to finish it off. Then it's green beans time. Perfect on the temp. Let's take it out. Let it rest on our cutting board for about five minutes. Also, let's make sure the potatoes are on perfect. Great timing. Check out our boiling water. Season it up. Make sure it is as salty as the ocean. Add in the green beans. In the meantime, i got a large frying pan. I'm going to add two tablespoons of unsalted butter. I'm going to start moving the pan around in a circular motion to glaze the bottom of the pan. This may take three or four minutes for it to completely melt over low heat. Once it's at this point, completely turn the heat off. Let's go check out the green beans. They look really, really good here. Going to give them a really thorough drain, okay? Shake as much water off as possible. We want them coated in butter, not water. Once the green beans are in there, swirl it around just like when the butter was in there, all right? Then, of course, you want to season it up with salt, fresh cracked black pepper. Give it a quick little toss. Taste it. Let's see what I need. Okay, remember I didn't have enough money to buy almonds, but we do have a leftover zested lemon. Slice it in half. That's all we'll need. Squeeze the juice in there. I always have my other hand in here to catch any seeds. Once it's in there, give it a quick flip. It's going to be really, really good here. Oh my gosh, from food being crazy expensive to my glasses breaking to being on a crazy time crunch because of that, I don't know how we got to the point we're at, but it will always go back to these fundamental basic cooking techniques. That's what it's all about. Making sure I got a quick, nice marinade on that pork, getting it browned on all sides, that glaze for the green beans, the potatoes, slicing them thin, cooking them, adding that extra cheese. All of these things will elevate your everyday cooking as long as you keep practicing them. Let me show you how to plate this up. Definitely do not forget to remove that butcher's twine. I'm going to thickly slice these up on a bite. It's just going to look really nice. And hey, if it's still pink in the center, no problem. You can serve pork tenderloin at medium to medium well. If you like well done, fine. Cook it longer. And I'm going extra fancy with potatoes. I have one of those circle round cutters. Just going to press it down. Transfer it over to my plate. Then just pull up on that circle round, boom, round scalp potatoes. Beautiful. Adding on some green beans. I'm going to fan out that pork tenderloin, make it look really, really pretty. And then I'm going to top it off with our honey gremolata. So tasty. I mean, come on now. This is easily a hundred bucks at a local restaurant for four people. Delicious, juicy, tender. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Now, if you are a huge pork tenderloin fan, definitely check out my grilled pork tenderloin with roasted pineapple salsa. You will love it. The video was awesome. I will see you on there.